eggs are wonderful. They help teach you what you didn't do good enough. <laughs> Ryan got a couple of screws on this corner. Just a few screws loose, right Ryan? Yep. <laughs> and so they were able to get out right there, but he's got it nice and secured. And that shouldn't move now, huh? Right. They've done a good job of clearing their pen area, which we expected. And we will be letting them out to graze in the pasture and getting them lots of time to roam very soon. We're getting things set up and ready for them. This area all through here and some of this wooded area right back here is going to be all fenced in around them so that they can graze. We just got to get the chickens moved out. Chickens are doing good. We've got a Rudy Lavender Americana that won't come out. She's not an Americana actual. She's an Easter egg or cross. But it's making it so the other hens are laying their eggs on the ground. Silly chickens. We keep taking her out of the nest box and taking her eggs away every day because we aren't set up to do a broody hen yet in this situation. Titus, what are you talking about? Oh man, we're going to have to put some fly repellent on this baby. Well, yeah, there you go. Just move around more and then they don't bother you at all. We've put some natural predators out here to help with the fly situation. Um, we've never had flies like this until we had cows, so it's pretty pretty uh, different having cows around. It seems like they attracts more flies. Right, Titus? It's all to have found those silly cows. Where are the cows? We've got two duck tractors currently, one with our anacondas and our original Margo. Um, from our Muscovies and then we have the Muscovies that Robert from Daybird Aviaries brought us in this tractor and we are going to be letting them out to free range as soon as we get our fencing up around the perimeter which will be getting done very shortly. We've been taking measurements and making our list and it'll be any day now and when I say any day I mean any weekend because that's basically the only time we get anything done with this little goober. We doing? We doing sweet boy? <sighs> He's so cute. So I don't know I think the cows might be in the woods which is fine for now. Yeah they must be. So we're gonna fence in all the way back there. We'll do a perimeter fence around the whole outside and then we'll have a section where we section it off for the pigs to graze by themselves when needed and the buck will have his own section and then we can combine the, the animals together when we need to. We'll have a gate in between each pasture. So it's going to be a really good, really good rotational grazing setup for us and I'm really looking forward to it. It's, the grass is growing so well here. It's already such a lush pasture. I mean, just look at it. It's so green. I mean, the grass is like almost to my knees out here. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how it improves when we rotate the animals in the proper way to fertilize the land and improve the health of the pasture even more. The goats are doing good. Their babies are growing fast. And truly right over my shoulder there, looking at the camera, is looking big and ripe. She's due May 4th, so we're super excited about that. Love to see if she's going to have her mama's udder, because Kitty has a beautiful udder, and I'd love to see that again in my herd. The mamas that kitted are definitely dealing with underweight issues and we are seeing a little bit of parasite, a little bit of pale eyelids. So we're up in our herbal dosages and making sure that if that doesn't work, we are definitely going to go ahead and give a dose of Quest Plus if we need to. Right? Yeah, that's right. So we don't like using the chemicals and we do everything we can to not have to do it. But if it gets to the point where the animal is at risk, we will absolutely do anything we can to help our animals. Along with getting the fencing set up to improve our infrastructure here on our new homestead, we are doing things like this trough refiller. What is it called, Daddy? 
Auto water. Auto water. This thing is so helpful. So we don't have to keep filling up the trough for the cows. It's always full. So we're going to get one of these to put on the goat's water as well. We're not going to do it to the pig water because they're more likely to dump it out and just keep it flowing. And that would be pretty wasteful <laughs> and pretty muddy. Ryan unloaded this horse trailer. A friend of ours brought us full of all this wood. This was all scrap lumber from projects they had done, what was left over from their fence and everything. And we are going to repurpose all of this. And this whole area that you're looking at right here from the she shed and that water tank all the way across here is going to be a chicken coop and run. Eventually, not right away. I got a birthday present. Ryan got me this genuine Jack Daniels whiskey barrel. And it actually smells like whiskey. He had to drill some holes in it for me so that we can plant some flowers. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's gonna be pretty. And this little guy, it's hard to believe he is almost a year old. You're getting so big, Odin. Yeah, you hear the birdie? Chirp, 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 chirp. You big boy. You gonna show us your teeth? Show me your teeth. No, you're gonna grab the camera. Look how big. He's so big. Oh, nope, he didn't do it. I thought he was gonna stand up. Oh no, he's distracted. He sees a kitty. He likes chasing kitties. Big boy. And the kitties are doing well. They are just fat and lazy. Fat lazy kitty, fat kitty, fat kitty. Yes, you're fat too. We love you too. Mitzi and Orva. Farm kitties. You're such a good mama. You're such a lazy mama. Beautiful babies. We've got some tomatoes and peppers and raspberries and figs and some tropical fruit seeds planted. These are all things that we have to plant in the near future. Our alpine strawberries, not alpine strawberries, but the white ones, pineapple strawberries are coming up in that um, window box from last year. And then we've planted some beautiful flower pots. We got some more peppers and tomatoes and marigolds and Celosia to plant our whiskey barrel. We're gonna, um, flowers for the whiskey barrel. The other plants we're gonna pot up and um, have a plant sale with. Then these pretty flower pots on the other side and some raspberry, blueberry, raspberry, more strawberries, roots that I almost killed so I don't know if they're gonna come back. And a tray of tomatoes I almost killed. You can see they've they were left out in the sun um, on a very hot day and weren't wet enough. Oopsie. But eventually we'll have all these things planted and these beautiful flower pots will just spill over with so much growth. Also, also got those um, grapevines to plant. Our booger peas are big but not blooming yet. Those are for you, Robert. Booger peas. We've got some little spinach coming up. A little bit of collard greens, some yellow beets, and some red beets. We're working on trying to get the garden ready again to plant because when we had it ready, it was still too cold and then the weeds started to grow. The winter annuals started to grow, so we're having to go back through and get it ready to plant again. And hopefully by next year we won't have to do so much work to prepare to plant it because it'll all be ready. Um, once we have enough compost in here and we have enough mulch covering up the beds so that weeds don't grow so much, it'll be a lot easier to get this garden bed planted. And I'm not even sure if this is going to be a long-term spot for our vegetable garden because it doesn't get as much sun as I thought it was going to. So it's our experimental bed this year to see how it does and hopefully next year we'll know if this is a good one to keep going with. We'll at least be able to grow some things in this bed, but I'm not sure how well our tomatoes and peppers will do because they require a lot more sunlight. 
really excited about the strawberries and the thornless blackberries we planted over here. The strawberries are doing great. They're blooming like crazy. And we are finally seeing black berries coming up out of the ground. At first we were only seeing the wild blackberries that were already kind of in this area and some poison ivy. <laughs> now we're starting to see the beautiful new growth of thornless blackberry. Isn't it gorgeous? So this beautiful baby here, I can tell they're soft, soft, no thorns, unlike the wild ones. And they're a much more purple color and they're coming up all down both of the rows we planted. So we do have to come in here with some horticulture vinegar, industrial strength vinegar to kill this poison ivy. So we are gonna use herbicide, but it is a vinegar natural based herbicide. But our strawberries are already trying to put out fruit. I'm so excited, y'all. This whole area will be mulched with the wood chips. I just wanted to wait and see so that I could keep an eye on the blackberries and make sure that they were developing well before I covered them up. I told Ryan to get the potato plow and just go ahead and do row after row after row in this bed and I'll go ahead and fill it up with plants whether it's tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, onions, everything and anything I can get in the ground now. Um, our danger of frost has passed. I can then go through and do whatever seeds I need to like cucumbers, beans, and squash. So I'm really excited to get this garden season <laughs> rocking. It is so exciting to have a new place to grow a garden. Our friends who were getting rid of all of that extra lumber were also had this bed in here. So we're going to set up a raised bed for the kids to plant right over here. We're going to do a layer of feed bags or cardboard first. Only paper feed bags, not plastic. And we are going to layer it with some sticks on the bottom to take up some space. And then we're going to add compost and a top layer of mulch and the kids will just have the best time planting a garden here. Ryan, you're just like a big kid. I am. What do you got? This looks like... I don't know what that one this is. looks like a skink. Yeah, but maybe. He's, he's don't not touch the, his tail. He's not the blue-tailed skink. But, but maybe a different kind. I've never with seen one with an orange mouth. Yeah. He's cute. He looks like he's saying, Hello, I'd like to speak to you about your car insurance. Yeah, I'm going to put him. Hello, I'd like to speak with you about your car warranty. He matches your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to put them? I'm thinking maybe by all those beautiful pots that you planted over uh, by our porch Ooh, door. Good idea. Yeah. When They're, we have the greenhouse up, you'll be able to put them in the greenhouse. I'm going to put them on the strawberry plant planter so he, uh, he can keep any pests away. Yay. Natural pest control at Wholesome Meats. Is this what you were talking about? Is this good? This is great, Ryan. Perfect. Awesome. Well, we just got this new area set up for our new tenants. These two are boarding with us. Mama seemed like she might have been in labor. After we got them all settled in, and I just came out to check, and she has four babies. Doing fantastic, it looks. So, good thing so far. And her sweet companion, Bill, is being right by her side. And Odin, too. Good job, Mama. That little runt. <laughs> oh, he rolled over, Daddy. Pick him up. Oh, there he goes. She, she. It's a she. The black one's a boy. And one of the orange ones is a boy, but I think it's mostly girls. 
I hope they all end up being boys. Can I pick that one up? You <laughs> well, we still have eight. Luckily, we had two babies that were having issues last night. One, obviously, is the run, considering how tiny she is. We've had to help her nurse and stay warm, so she had to stay in with us. And then this little male right here little bowser he has some respiratory issues from aspirating so we are keeping a very close eye on him and we are going to go ahead and begin antibiotics to be on the safe side but i gotta help the little girl nurse now because as you can see she can't get in there and nurse but i came out here every three hours and made sure she did come here little girl you're so tiny Tiny. Look at that. She's so tiny. She's like the size of a hot dog. Oh, Princess Peach is still trying. She is on goat milk colostrum and she is staying inside and then she comes out to do chores with me and hangs out with her mama and siblings and tries to nurse. So we're hoping to get her back on mom, but we're going to keep supplementing her because fed is best. Unfortunately, Princess Peach didn't survive. We got her to two weeks old and we woke up one morning and she was gone. We gave it our best shot, but she just wasn't meant to be with us in this world.